Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Ricky Burke, senior pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Bernie, and we're so thankful to have you here this morning. This is Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the birthday of the church, the church universal, and we also remember of the new outpouring at that time of the Holy Spirit upon all people. So as we go through this service today, I want you to reflect on this one question. How would your life be different if there was a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit on you? Hi, I'm Lori, I'm one of the associate pastors here. And right now I'd like to invite you to take a moment and greet those that are worshiping with you. If you'd like to greet someone that isn't with you, pick up your phone and just send them a quick text. And while you have your phone handy, I'd also like to invite you to register your attendance using your phone. In a moment, there'll be a phone number on the screen and we invite you to text your name and the name of the people that are worshiping with you to that phone number. A member of our church staff will receive those texts and record your attendance with us. And this is one way that really helps us stay connected with you. So I hope you will do so. Peace be with you.
the contemporary worship leader here. Would you stand or take whatever posture of worship works for you in your space? And we're going to sing a song. We come now to a time of prayer. You know, back in the old days, three months ago, we would have bulletins that would list the names of people we asked you to be in prayer for. And we're not able to do that right now. So we hope that you will um, just imagine the needs of our community of faith, the needs of our city, our nation, and our world, and to take those with me as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord of patience and persistence, we live in a broken and shattered world. All around us we see great evidence of division and alienation. We cannot help but observe the alienation of your people from one another. Even though we must separate ourselves physically from each other, we also seem to create ways to separate ourselves ideologically 
and racially and theologically and economically rather than uniting and coming together in hope. Forgive us for our sins. They cause such division and hurt. Remind us today that the disciples too lived in a fearful world and that one day you came to them as they sat huddled in fear and you empowered them. You gave them hearts of courage and of faith. Bring to us the same hearts that we may serve you well, bringing peace and hope to our world. And so we pray for our world today. For the gift of your spirit in our lives and in our church, we give you thanks. For the gifts you give to each of us to create your beloved community here on earth, we give you thanks. For all of creation, that it may be honored and preserved and protected, come Holy Spirit, come. For the leaders of our nation and all nations of the world, that they might be guided with wisdom and understanding and committed to act in ways that bring your presence and peace. Come, Holy Spirit, come. For all places where there are wars and rumors of wars, for those places where hunger gnaws, for those places ruled by oppression and injustice, for those places where hatred overcomes love, come, Holy Spirit, come. Where dreams have died and visions are squelched, renew their spirits with your passionate fire. Come, Holy Spirit, come. For all who are ill, whether in body, mind, or spirit, for all who mourn, whether for the loss of loved ones or the loss of a job or even the loss of faith, fill them with your spirit of compassion and strength that they may know that they are never alone. Holy Spirit, make us Pentecost people who reach out in love and caring. For all that you've given and will yet give, we give you thanks. In the name of Christ, we offer this prayer. And we pray together the prayer Christ taught us to pray as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for elimination. Eternal God, in the reading of the scripture, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, May your word be shown. Today's scripture reading comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21 from the New Living Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages, as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them saying, they're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. 
Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, kids, it's time for children's time. So I want to invite you to go grab a friend or a sibling and come join us. All right, guys. Well, I have a question for you. Have you ever tried to hold your breath and see how long you can hold it? Maybe you were swimming in a pool and you were testing to see um, how long you could stay underwater and hold your breath. Well, odds are you probably didn't get past maybe two or three minutes. Um, as you may have noticed, I am very pregnant right now and there's a baby in this belly taking up a whole lot of space. And so I probably wouldn't even last a minute <laughs> at this point. And that's just because we need air, we need oxygen. It's important for our life. That's how we stay alive and live. But you may have noticed that we're kind of in a weird place right now. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. And all that means is, is that there's a contagious sickness out in the world. And we have to do our best to keep that from spreading around as much as we can. So maybe if you've gone to the store or even the park or even maybe your family, if they're out and about, you may have seen them uh, wearing a mask. And what this does is just provides an extra barrier so that we're not exchanging breath with other people. We're trying to avoid sharing our breath, getting the breath of someone else. Um, so that's kind of, this is a weird time where we're kind of scared of each other's breath, of this breath that and air that's so important for us. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday, and as Pastor Ricky is going to talk about this is the day that's super important for Christians. This is whenever the Holy Spirit, there was a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And this is kind of the church's birthday because the Holy Spirit breathed life into the early Christians and breathed life into the church. Well, the Hebrew word, one of the Hebrew words for Holy Spirit is ruach. And this word translates to wind or breath. So you may hear people talk about the Holy Spirit and reference the Holy Spirit as the breath of God. And that's where this comes from. Now this breath of God is what gives us life and sustains life. This breath of God is the presence of the Holy Spirit because of Pentecost here with us, among us on earth and inside of us. Every time that we breathe in and out, we are breathing in and out the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. So right now in this time when we are nervous to share breath and air, with other people when we're trying to stay away from other people so that we can avoid sharing those germs. I want you to remember that the breath of God is inside of you. And even though we are being careful and trying to keep our breath 
from other people and other people's breath from us. I don't want you to be afraid of the breath of God. I want you to embrace the breath of God and want to share the breath of God. This is even more important than the oxygen and the air around us. This is the Holy Spirit within us. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you for your breath that gives us life and peace and hope in the midst of chaos. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you're a parent, you probably remember the day each of your children were born. You can remember it just as if it happened yesterday. If you're an adoptive parent, you can probably remember in a very same way the day you brought home that special child or children. And I would think that each one of us can remember a grandparent or a parent or a godparent telling us about the day that we were born. So today I want to tell you a similar story. It's not about the birth of a person, but it's about the birth of a church. N not this one, but the church universal. Here's how that story began. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, part of the passage you just heard read, says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Now, in this one simple sentence, there's three very important points that we want to look at. The first one is that we're meeting in one place. Where was that place? Today, we refer to that place as the upper room. Now, there's a lot more history to the upper room than just the day of Pentecost. In the upper room is where Jesus washed his disciples' feet, and he taught them the importance of humility and servanthood and leadership, and that the first would be last and the last would be first. In the upper room is where they also shared the Last Supper, and Jesus instituted Holy Communion for us. And it was in the upper room where Jesus appeared in his resurrected body to his disciples. So there's great history that goes with this. If you've ever been to Jerusalem, I have a chance that you have been to the upper room. Now, it also says that they were meeting together. Who are they? That's 120 disciples, men and women followers of Jesus, deeply devoted and committed. Now, you would think that there would be a tendency after the resurrection of Christ and even after he has appeared to them for the fishermen to want to go back to Galilee and for others to go back to their home or uh, to their career. But Jesus has told them, and we can find the words today in Acts chapter 1, to stay in Jerusalem. Don't leave town, if you will, until the promise of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is sent from heaven by God. So they are all gathered together here in this one place, in the upper room, in obedience, waiting for the Holy Spirit. Now, this special event the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the birthday of the church, happened on a day called Pentecost. Now, what is Pentecost? Well, Pentecost was an agricultural festival that the Jews celebrated. Pentecost literally means 50. So it occurred 50 days after Passover. Uh, and it was also referred to as, not Pentecost, but Passover was also a time when there was a festival called First Fruits. Now, in the days of Israel, there was just two crops that were grown, and they were basically barley and wheat. Uh, there was an early harvest and a late harvest. The festival of Pentecost refers to the early harvest of barley. Now, most farmers will understand this, but even today, the outside of any uh, area of a field where there is a crop will always mature first. 
And the reason for that is that crop on the very outside, that plant on the outside, if you will, has half as much competition with moisture and nutrients. And so at first fruits, uh, the farmer would bring a sheaf or a bundle of this first um, matured crop. It would be presented to the priest in the temple or the local place, wherever they lived at. And it was an expression of gratitude, an expression of giving to God first, an expression of giving to God our best. And then it also came with a prayer that God would watch over the remainder of the crop and that the farmer could bring it in safely. So, again, Pentecost means 50, and it occurred 50 days after the week of Passover when Christ was resurrected. Now, there is some marvelous symbolism here that we must not miss. The first is that Jesus was crucified during the week of Passover. We understand that he was crucified on Friday. He died upon the cross late in the afternoon. Now, the Jewish day ends at 6 p.m., so it was about to become the Sabbath. Now, that means that Christ had to be hastily buried in a borrowed tomb. Joseph of Arimathea uh, received permission to do that. And Christ was buried right before the Sabbath began on that Friday. Now comes the great symbolism. Sunday morning, Easter, the resurrection. At the same moment that the high priest in the temple would be celebrating or sacrificing the first fruits, these bundles of wheat, and also making loaves of bread, our first fruit, Jesus Christ, was rising from the grave. The first fruit, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us, of those who will follow him. It reminds us that Christ has done for us what we can never do for ourselves. He has defeated death. He has gone first. He is that pioneer, as the book of Hebrews talks about. So Christ is resurrected on Easter or on that Sunday, the first day of the week. Then, as Russell taught us last week, and if you have not listened to that sermon, I highly recommend it. It's called liminal space. It's an explanation of what we do in the in-between time. Uh, you can find that sermon either on our church Facebook page or on our church um, web page. Uh, but during those 40 days, Christ appeared to his disciples multiple times, and then at the end of those 40 days, he ascended. He went to heaven. And the scriptures tell us he now sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, symbolic of Christ ruling and reigning. Uh, now, it was 10 days after that that Pentecost occurred and the Holy Spirit descended. Now, here's the story. It's a long passage, so please stay with me. It's Acts chapter 2 and verses 2 through 4. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they, those 120 disciples, were sitting, and that house was the upper room. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone, that's key, everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Now I want to focus on just one word in this lengthy passage. And that is the word windstorm. Um, different translations to use different words and different phrases, like a mighty rushing wind, uh, a violent wind. Uh, but if you look at this in the original language of the Greek, it means a violent, overpowering wind. We must not think of Pentecost as this 
gentle breeze that just kind of blew through the uh, upper room among all those disciples. It must have been scary. It, it, it was an experience of a lifetime. Have you ever had the experience of having to ride out a tornado or hurricane in a home or maybe someplace even more vulnerable? I've never had to have that experience. I have talked to many people who have. I have a younger sister who years ago living in Kansas in Tornado Alley with a six-month-old baby and her husband uh, two states away working had to experience that. And part of the roof was torn off. And even though she was in the basement with that baby, she was terrified. If you've ever talked to anyone who's had an experience that, when they said it sounded like a train coming through the house or a commercial airliner about to crash into the house, you know that it was a life-changing experience. And so was the arrival of the Holy Spirit with these 120 disciples. It was a life-changing experience. It was violent in the sense that it turned their world upside down. It was overpowering in the sense that they could not help but yield to the Holy Spirit. Now, you can guess where I'm going with this. The Holy Spirit still wants to come into our lives. And sometimes it is in an overpowering way. God cannot be put in a box, so sometimes it's in a very gentle, comforting way. And we must be open to all of those ways. You know, I think one of the reasons we're not open is that when we think about the coming of the Holy Spirit, we think about Pentecostalism, and speaking in tongues, and, and, and just spontaneous uh, expressions of emotion. But if we look at this passage, it says that the disciples began to speak in other languages. You see, the Bible tells us there's two gifts of tongues, if you will. There's a public gift where we speak in a language that someone else can understand. And there's a private gift that is part of our prayer language. I think it's a gift that's given to some people and not all people. I can remember when I was in my early 20s and I was around people who spoke in tongues in that private language. I was so impressed. I wanted to be mature like them. And I prayed and I prayed and I fasted and I begged with God and I never received that gift. But you know, that doesn't make me or you less in the body of Christ. Gifts are given by God as God sees fit. So we don't want to be intimidated by the thought of the Holy Spirit taking us over. You see, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have the Holy Spirit. It comes with the new birth. But you know, some people have never been taught that. And that's why they don't speak with or communicate with the Holy Spirit. We need to remember this very simple phrase. I can't remember who I first heard it from, but I heard it 50 years ago. You can have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit may not have you. You can have the Holy Spirit from the new birth, but until you recognize that and yield to the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit cannot work through you as God wishes for that to happen. So don't be afraid. The Holy Spirit's never going to embarrass you. So I want to ask you this morning, just like I hope there's been a time in your life when you said, Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. I hope there's been a, a, a similar time when you said, Holy Spirit, I know you are that gift that Jesus promised. You are, as John 14, 26 says, my counselor, my advocate, my life coach. You are the one who wants to teach me how to be like Jesus and bring all things to my remembrance. So anytime you're trying to make a decision, just remember, hit pause and say, Holy Spirit, I'm listening. 
Give me the advice that I need. Now, all of this that I said can be boiled down to one simple, very important principle. The church is a community and movement of the Holy Spirit. A community and movement of the Holy Spirit. When we think of a community, we can think of a, a, a literal place like the community of Bernie or the community of Bergham or the community of San Antonio. But in the context of this passage, it's best understood this way. A group of people with similar interests and goals. And we must always remember that the primary interest and goal of the community called church is making disciples of Jesus Christ. That is our mission as a church. And I'm so thankful that that is the mission of the United Methodist Church, making disciples. And I'm also so thankful that as a church here, First United Methodist Church of Bernie, we do a good job of that through worship, through discipleship, through service. We have great strengths. But we need to always be asking ourselves, how can we build upon these strengths? How can we improve on what we're doing? And also, can we as individuals and as a church ask the Holy Spirit to give us new ways to bring new life to others? If you've experienced that new birth and that new life, you have the responsibility to share that new life with others. Can we ask the Holy Spirit to give us new and creative ways to do that? Now, that's very important because this passage tells us that this new community is for everyone, all people. Let me read these two verses, chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. In the last days, let me touch on that real quickly. The last days simply mean the time, it's like liminal space, like Russell was talking about. It's that time between the first coming of Jesus Christ and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Those are the last days. We are in those last days. One day there will be a last day singular. When Christ returns and paradise is restored and the kingdom of heaven comes to earth. But until that, we're in that in-between time, helping to build the church for Jesus Christ. The passage goes on to say, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. They will have a ministry. They will be gifted. They will be called upon God to be used of God to fulfill God's purposes. Now, I can't emphasize enough what a radical, revolutionary statement this would be for a first century Jew. Remember, up until this time, the Holy Spirit had always existed. You can go back to Genesis chapter 1, and you can find the Holy Spirit and the Trinity two different places, just in the first chapter of the Bible. But in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was only poured out upon certain people for certain tasks, priests, prophets, and kings, and, and, and other people. And now, all of a sudden, it's for all people. And again, this was shocking to the Jewish mentality of the first century. It's going to be given to Gentiles? You remember the prayer that the, uh, the Pharisees prayed every morning? God, I thank you I'm not a Gentile. I thank you I'm not a woman. I thank you I'm not a slave. The Pharisees literally believed that the only reason Gentiles existed was to fuel the fires of hell. And now the Spirit... The call of God is being poured out on Gentiles. That's us. If Pentecost had never happened, where would you and I be in our relationship with God? Poured out on Gentiles. Poured out on women. Poured out on servants. Just think. God was asking them, will you invite and welcome 
those who work for you to worship with you? What a mighty change that this was. Uh, like I said, this was a, a radical, a revolutionary thought for the church to move from being exclusive to being inclusive, inclusive to be inviting and welcoming. You know, one of the things I'm so proud about uh, regarding our church is we're known as a welcoming congregation. It brings me such joy anytime that I have an individual, a couple, or a family join our congregation and tell me one of the primary reasons they chose us is because we are so friendly. That's a great strength to build upon. How can we do that? How can we give increase to what we are doing well? And then secondly, can we ask the Holy Spirit to give us new ways to bring new life to others. Again, we've experienced that new life. And we have that responsibility to bring that new life, share that new life, teach of that new life to others. The Holy Spirit wants to work through us. Are we yielded to do that? Now, I said that the church is a community of the Holy Spirit. I want to real quickly end by saying the church is also a movement of the Holy Spirit. Now, the movement, uh, a definition of the movement can be thought of as changing places or changing locations, like in yoga, or perhaps a football player, maybe someone in the backfield in motion. But again, in the context we're talking about here, a better definition is this. It's a group of people working to advance shared goals. And that is precisely what that group of 120 were doing at Pentecost. They had a goal to spread the gospel, to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And they worked together to do that. I want you to consider this. One morning at 9 o'clock, on Pentecost Day, there were 120 disciples. There were only 120 Christians on planet Earth. But in a few hours, there was 3,000 more. And in just a few more days, those 3,000 would be going back to so many different nations. It was like an international crusade. And you can be sure they all went back to share their witnesses and, and start home churches. The gospel was spread all around the known world. It was a movement, and that movement still continues today. The Holy Spirit is still looking for disciples to work through. My friends, please hear me. That wind is still blowing. Can you hear it? May we pray. Holy Spirit, you, the promised one, the great gift of God, we welcome you, we acknowledge you, we yield to you. Blow anew, afresh in our lives. Give us new and creative ways to strengthen what we're doing well and to begin new things, new ways, new ministries and programs so that we can bring that new life to others. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you please join me in our response to God's word? We sing of God the Spirit who from the beginning has swept over the face of creation, animating all energy and matter and moving into the human heart. We sing of God the Spirit, faithful and untamable, who is creatively and redemptively active in the world. The Spirit challenge, challenges us to celebrate the holy, not only in what is familiar, but also in that which seems foreign. We sing of the Spirit, who speaks our prayers of deepest longing and enfolds our concerns and confessions 
transforming us and the world. We offer worship as an outpouring of gratitude and awe and a practice of opening ourselves to God's still, small voice of comfort, to God's rushing whirlwind of challenge. Through word, music, art, and sacrament, in community and in solitude, God changes our lives, our relationships, and our world. As we prepare to partake of communion, may I remind us all that communion here is an open table. So as you're watching this, maybe you're not a Methodist, and that's okay, because this invitation is open to all. So I encourage you to partake of whatever works for you in the way of juice or bread, and to remember this story with me. There was a time when Christ shared a last meal with his disciples. During the course of that meal, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And showing it to them, he said, this is my body which is given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then as he came to the end of the meal, he took the cup and pouring it, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now, in just a moment, we're all going to partake together. And as we do, I invite you to do the same at home. Take together. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Now, please hear these words. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Like the disciples did on the day of Pentecost, we invite you to act on your faith. So today we invite you to continue to be the church by finding ways to connect with one another and checking on one another. You can send texts, make phone calls, send um, encouraging notes to those around you. You can be the church by continuing to pray for our church, for our city, for our nation, and for our world. And you can also continue to support the ministries of the church through your giving. In some ways, it feels like the church closed, didn't it, during the pandemic. But in many ways, the church has been busier than ever as the needs have grown, and your giving is important. As we have the offertory, you will see information on your screen about how to give online, via text, or via mobile app. So let us pray. For all you have given, O God, for all we have received, we give you thanks. We bring before you our gifts of substance and the gifts of our lives. We pray 
that our passion and joy and surprise, our visions and dreams may be pleasing to you. And may they refresh and enliven our church and community as the wind of your spirit did so long ago. In Christ's name we make our prayer. Amen. And now would you receive this benediction. Come Holy Spirit, give us new ways to share this new life with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's move into the um, <laughs> thank you. Let's move into the bulletin area. Okay. Hi, I'm Rachel Ladder. I'm whoa, whoa, what is my name? It has two layers to it. So when it's time for communion,
peel off the top layer, easier said than done. I'm going to need to take two on this. Blooper reel. <laughs> I can't get that top layer open. <laughs> Maybe peel the bottom layer and then peel the top. Oh no, and I just spilled on the cloth. <laughs> When you peel off the top layer, <laughs> you will find a very tasty wafer. And then in the bottom layer is the cup of juice. At the pastor's direction, we'll all take the juice and the, and the bread together. Oh, you may want to take your mask down just for that part. <laughs>